before you start taking things apart, you've got some really important design trade-offs to consider. Hanging or climbing, slick wheels are sticky, balls up in the air or on the ground. You've got some really important decisions to make quite early. Decisions that will stay with you throughout the whole build season. You know that no robot left behind thing in 2009? That's right. Every robot made it onto the field last year, and we're trying to repeat that in 2010. So take a deep breath and stay with us a minute while we look at the field before you start cutting metal. And this year, instead of doing our usual mock round with mock robots, we're going to jump right into some of the subtleties and nuances of the game to help you figure out what's important here. Dave? Okay, but first, let's get the field set up for autonomous play. Take the ball, put it in a legal spot. That should do it, and we're set. Hey, Dave, that looked easy in the animation. Hey, Woody, did that one count? Nope, didn't count. It's got to stay in to count. You've got to be careful not to really blast it like that. Okay, Woody. I'll try the kinder, gentler Dean. It worked. That's it. But what's that inside the goal? It's that memory foam. You know, like the stuff in the mattresses in fancy hotels. It works with the chain to keep the balls from bouncing back out. Hey, that looks like an ordinary soccer ball. It is. It's a standard issue, size 5. Oops. Blue just lost control of that ball. It rolled all the way into the red end. Ah, that's better. At least Blue didn't lose control this time. Let's talk a minute about bumps and balls. Getting some subtleties like loft or backspin when you kick is easy with your foot, but getting a machine to do it takes some real engineering. Yep, there are a lot of techniques for kicking a ball, and every one of them will produce a different result. That's one point for Dean. Let's see what I can do from back here. Nice. But if I intentionally did this, I get a yellow card and a penalty. And the officials will put the ball back into play at midfield as quickly as they can. They're really hustling. What's the rush? They have a limited amount of time to put the balls back into play, or they'll be penalized. All the timing details are in the game manual. It looks like the Trident handler is going to be the bottleneck in the process. I'll bet the robots are going to be able to score a lot faster than the human players can return the balls. So most of the time, some of the balls will not be on the field. That is probably important. The robots better make every shot count. Okay, let's get a look at these robots. Hey, isn't that a new gate? Yeah, it's there because we never want to see anybody carrying a robot over bumps. In fact, isn't that prohibited? Yes, it is too dangerous. The first offense gets you a yellow card, the second a red card. So these are both legal robots, both within the weight limit, both within the size limit, and both of them were built from the new upgraded kit of parts. We put four sticky wheels on this one. It climbs great, but it looks like the steering is kind of jerky. Yep, this setup may be pretty tough to aim using the vision algorithm in Autonomous. It might even be hard to aim in Teleop. So this is a short bot with slick wheels. Let's see how it does. We got it. Hey, guys, remember, no lifting over the bump. OK, well, I see the traction is really going to be something to think about. Have to really watch what goes on with the center of gravity. Let's add some weight to the tall bot and see. And that was only 10 pounds. That's clever. It's even legal. It won't let the ball get too far under the bot, but it still allows the robot to deal with the bumps on the field. There are a lot of ways to do that. It'll be exciting to see how the teams do it. The robot's not allowed to hold a ball, but hurting is fine. That's right. The robot can only possess one ball at a time. That's not legal. Aside from potentially damaging your wiring, if the ball landed on top of it, the robot is carrying the ball. That gets you a penalty. 
That camera view is great for lining up on the center line. But that one is mounted too low to see the target. So let's see how tough these robots really are. Well, wait a minute, Dave. This makes no sense. Both robots have blue bumpers, same color, same alliance, right? No problem. This year, teams can switch their bumper color very quickly. Okay, Kate, let her rip. If I were to make a blackboard sketch of a kicker mechanism, it would probably look a little like this. It's obviously too big for a real robot, but let's see how it works. Okay, let's find out. Whoa. Now, clearly kickers can have a lot of energy in them this year, so it's clear we got to be really careful. Yeah, and it's not just that energy. They deliver that energy so quickly, it's a huge amount of power. In fact, see, one of the ways to make that clear is to dry fire this mechanism. Oof. And it's very clear that unless you're careful, you can hurt your robot and or people. And that's the point to remember. Let's see what would happen without that rule. That would be bad. Wow. Good thing we're almost done here. Let's see how the end game might look. Two point bonus. That's two more. And that robot is touching only its alliance partner. It qualifies for three points. They're up to five points. And there's plenty of room up here for another robot. Nice job. But we're not done until we've removed the robots from the tower. We've got a lot of weight, bad leverage, and sharp stuff to deal with here, so let's be careful. Nicely done.